it's Platt, and today we try an ice beer. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the particular beer we have today is Ice House. Uh, some of you out there may know the brand or not. Uh, popular uh, back when I was in college, about 25, 30 years ago. Another one of these classic brands I want to kind of come back to and, and talk about a little bit. Uh, Ice House is produced by Plank Road Brewing. Uh, Plank Road is part of the Molson Coors uh, portfolio of beers uh, here in the U.S. It's referred to as Miller Coors for legal purposes. And Plank Road is in the Miller portfolio, uh, to be technically correct. Uh, Plank Road Brewing is located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And something I totally forgot about until I researched this video, Plank Road was the original Miller Brewery. Uh, Frederick Miller purchased the brewery in 1855 and later changed the name to Miller Brewing. Uh, he bought it from Charles and Lorenz Best at the time. They also, besides the brewery, also had a beer garden. I believe Frederick Miller came in later and added a full-blown tavern, so uh, you could have a shot in beer right on the premise of Miller Brewing, which sounds like a pretty cool idea. One of the things that uh, attracted Miller to purchase this brewery was at the time, now currently Ice ha or Plank Road Brewing is in the middle of Milwaukee, but at the time the brewery was located outside of town, gave uh, Miller plenty of room to grow. He also got access to spring water, so instead of having to use kind of the generic lake water, he had access to spring water. And we know uh, quality water helps make quality beer. Uh, Plank Road today only has two products they produce. There's Ice House, and then they have something called uh, Ice House Edge. It's an 8% ABV variation of this beer. I uh, believe it's a little darker in color. It's not a dark beer, but a little more dark golden color. Um, some will say an 8% ABV kind of pushes it more into that malt liquor category. Uh, yes or no, uh, it's sold in the same uh, fine locations where you can find malt liquor, though. Uh, one, one other product Plank Road used to produce, and if you're of a certain age, you might remember it, it was called Red Dog. Uh, that was the fad after the ice beer fad of the early to mid-90s. Mid to later 90s was the red beer fad. Uh, Red Dog was the most popular. There was Red Wolf. There was Red Elephant. And there's not a couple others out there, but that fad ended fairly uh, quickly. Well, before we uh, try this beer, let's check out the stats. So today I thought we would talk about ice beers in general. Again, it was kind of a fad 25 plus years ago. Uh, they're still around today, but not, not as popular as they used to be. Uh, they were really big when I was in college, and part of the reason was these beers are typically just generic American lagers, but they go through a fractional freezing process that bumps up the ABV. Uh, Ice House is 5.5%. Your generic Bud Light Miller Lite Swarver is 4.2%. So you basically got that style of beer that you like drinking, but you got an extra percent plus of alcohol, and... These beers were generally, well, at the time, they were the same price. Today, they're probably cheaper than those beers. So it was kind of a win-win thing, especially for the college kid, which I was at the time. Um, real quick, like I so said, they use something called fractional freezing. Uh, you could use the term fractional distillation, even though don't think of it in that sense. We're not getting, well, you could get beers up to the 40 50% range, but generally this is done to just add a couple of percent of alcohol by volume. Uh, the original ice beers were something called Eisbach. It was a German style beer. They would take a Doppelbach, which is normally in the 6 to 7% ABV range, do a partial freezing, and that would uh, they could get the beer up to the 9 to 13% alcohol by volume range. Uh, you could, like I said, you would take a beer, partially freeze it, get some ice crystals, kind of scoop those out. All your um, water freezes at a lower temperature than alcohol, so what you're removing is just pure water at that temperature, and you're dropping the volume but concentrating the alcohol. Um, a variation on this theme is something called Applejack. Uh, if you've never tried or heard of it, I actually have a video on how to make Applejack. And they would take apple cider and leave a barrel outside and let it freeze uh, partially overnight, scoop the ice out. They would generally, 
With Applejack, they would take something that would be 8 to 10% alcohol by volume and get it up into the 20. So they, they would ramp it up a little bit more, cut, cut the volume in half, basically. Um, here in North America, most of these ice beers are in the 6 to 8% range, and that is mainly due to most jurisdictions, once you get above 8% or so alcohol by volume on beers, they're generally sold in liquor stores only and not sold in grocery stores, gas stations, convenience stores, what have you. So, and the crowd that these beers are catered to is the person that buys beer, gas stations, and convenience stores. So, uh, that's why the North American version of the style of beer is a little lower ABV wise. The first uh, North American ice beer uh, was produced by Molson. It was Canadian ice, came out in early 1993. Uh, a few months later, Miller introduced Ice House as the first American ice beer. Um, a, after that, there was kind of a mini rush to different ice beers. Some of those, um, some of those brands have disappeared, but there's still a few out there. Uh, generally on the bottom end of the portfolio range, these major breweries, there's uh, Bud Ice, Natty Ice, uh, Keystone Ice, Bush Ice, Labatt's Ice. I think Old Milwaukee still produces some kind of Old Milwaukee Ice. So <clears throat> these beers are out there just kind of on the lower end of the, of the range. Again, uh, the product has been catered to uh, kind of a variation of the malt liquor crowd. Again, younger drinkers, they're trying to get as much alcohol as possible for their dollars. Uh, real quick, I want to talk about... When I'm talking about these beers, I'm talking about, again, what you'd see in a 16-ounce, 24-ounce can in a convenience store. There are other ice beers out there that are on the other end of the scale. Uh, a good one is Brew Dog's Tactical Nuclear Penguin. Uh, I talked about this uh, one time in a video about the ultra-high ABV beers, and that's achieved through fractional freezing and not actual distillation because then it would, wouldn't be a beer anymore if you distilled it. Uh, and those beers are getting into 30, 40 plus percent alcohol by volume, but that's a little different than what we're talking about here. Well, enough about ice beers. Let's drink one. All right, we got a good deeper golden color, uh, not quite finger width, light or white foamy head. Mmm, smell the fresh adjuncts. <laughs> Let's give her a dry. Oh my god, that tastes like passing out on a couch <laughs> in a can. Um, again, it is in the vein of an uh, American uh, lager, Bud Miller Coors. Um, a little more viscosity, a little more body, and again, because they've reduced the water, it's not... A, a larger malt base or anything like that. So you're going to pick up a little more mouthfeel in these beers just, again, to the, la the lack of water in them, you know, uh, mainly. Um, Flavor-wise, again, this is a miller like Bud Light, you know, in that vein, goes down easy, no real hop aroma or flavor. Uh, this beer's slightly Swedish, not Swedish, but sweet, you know, um, all right, goes down easy. Um, like I said, this is this, uh, this tastes like uh, uh, college, you know. All I need is some jello shots and uh, beer pong, and we're, we're, we're in business. Um, not a bad, not, not a bad beer though, at all. I, it is what it, it's uh, what I would call a consumption beer, but overall, not too bad. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Well, until next time, bottoms up.